There are in fact two ways to develop language. Analytic language processing, which is what we base most of our traditional speech therapy off of, and then gestalt language processing, which is essentially um, some of our kids who maybe script or have echolalia. So they might repeat lines from movies or shows or maybe lines that they've heard familiar people say. So a lot of our therapy has been based off of analytic language processing. So learning small units of language like single words and then combining those words into phrases and then to sentences in conversation. So kind of a bottom up approach. Our Gestalt language processors learn language more in a top down approach. So they learn entire chunks of language or Gestalts and then they should naturally progress to be able to change up those Gestalts and then learn to recombine um, words into their own self-generated language but sometimes what we see is that they get stuck. So Gestalt language processing in and of itself is not disordered. But if you do notice that your child is stuck in these, producing these Gestalts and cannot communicate in a variety of ways for a variety of purposes, which might lead to like shutdowns, meltdowns, or frustration, then that's where we might need to intervene. And this isn't um, something that all SLPs are trained in. So I didn't receive training on this approach in graduate school and it's kind of like i said a new framework to our therapy world so if your child is a gestalt language processor you really need to find someone who is trained in this approach um, and here at cutting edge we see so many individuals who are gestalt language processors that we've really tried to educate our team on this approach um, it is estimated that up to 80 percent or more of autistic individuals process language in this way um, and so that's pretty significant. When I first heard about this framework, I was like, wow, this fits so many kids that I work with. 